Hi guys and welcome back to VR Essentials where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and your go-to place for any HP Reverb G2 content. In today's video, we're going to compare the differences between using 90Hz and 60Hz with No Mind Sky on the HP Reverb G2. In the previous two videos, we showed you how to get the best FPS and graphic settings using a variety of different techniques, including reprojection. Today's shout out goes to Serafina, Kibura, and John East. All right, are you ready? Let's go. By the way, this video is not sponsored by VR-Wave.store. However, they have sent us a couple of the lens prescription adapters and we've made a few videos, which I'll put a link in the description below. And I can tell you they are super awesome. So if like me, you wear glasses and you want total immersion, I really suggest you go and check them out. And by the way, you can use the promo code VR Essentials to get a 5% discount. Hello, bonjour, hope you're doing well today. So we're going to talk about the differences between using 90 Hertz and 60 Hertz refresh rate with No Man's Sky on the, of course, HP Reverb G2. So maybe you're asking yourself, why would I want to use 60 Hertz? Well, first of all, some people may not have a graphics card to enable them to go higher than that, first of all. And secondly, for those who do have that graphics card, sometimes as we demonstrated in Aceto Corsa Competizione when we did a very similar video, we actually showed we could use 60 Hertz refresh rate and get very decent graphics and gameplay, which means that the GPU and the CPU are not gonna work as hard. So you're gonna save a lot of energy and power and you know, make things longer lasting as they say. So, all right, let's dive into VR. Voice recognition authorized. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our mixed reality settings and then basically change the setting from 90 hertz to 60 hertz refresh rate. If you want to learn more about behind the scenes tips and tricks as to really, you know, boost those FPS and get the best graphics as possible, I really suggest you go and check out part one and part two of the two previous videos that we had uploaded as we're going to be using the same super sampling percentage for those benchmarks to begin with. Accessing files. So as you can see, inside of the game, when I first loaded it at 60 Hertz refresh rate, it actually performed pretty well. The settings in game that we're using are the same as the previous video. So do go and check out all the in game settings. I did some various benchmarks there, uh, which I think will be quite helpful to you. And, you know, it seemed to be completely fine. In fact, when I wasn't using OBS and the FPS tool running at the same time, as you know the game itself i was actually having some decent performances however i did find at some stages that there were some issues um, now the super sampling that i'm using inside of steam vr is actually pretty high and as i had mentioned in the previous video uh, openxr didn't actually make any difference for here and then also all the nvidia settings again you know a lot of them are switched off so we know that the issues are not coming from there Engaging. I did find when we compare the actual loading of the game, which is where you're inside of the universe um, and, you know, things are caching and all this kind of stuff, that the actual frame time for the GPU and GPU temp usage were actually lower than when, you know, using 90 hertz refresh rate, which gave me the confidence that we'd actually have a better gameplay. And then also that, you know, running at a 60 hertz refresh rate, of course, would save my GPU more and not, you know, stress it. Uh, so much. But running it at 130% super sampling, I did find occasionally that actually there was some stutter starting to happen, even though most of the graphics were actually very clear. And, you know, I was quite happy to keep it running there. And I felt that some of those stutter didn't run for a long time. So to begin with, I thought, okay, this is actually a VR experience I could deal with. Okay, maybe sometimes for five seconds or so, there might be some stutter here and there as I enter a different scene. For example, where I'm going inside of the cave, there was some stutter there, you know, but then it will be fine for the next half an hour or one hour possibly, or however, how many minutes. So everything will be okay and I won't have so much of a headache. However, as I took the ship and I started to fly away, that's when things started to get complicated and I really started to get a lot more lagging and, you know, it just wasn't comfortable for me in VR whatsoever. In fact, at one stage, the screen just almost completely stopped. It was just really horrible. I had to just pull off the headset straight away. And then when I went back inside, I tried to experiment a little bit by, you know, bringing down some of the graphics, of course, because uh, I had tessellation on high, I had post-processing, which was, you know, on high or enhanced. 
you know, and also the graphic settings was on high. So I started to experiment to see whether, you know, by bringing those down, whether my experience in VR would actually be more comfortable. I found, of course, that it did help now and then. But again, when I was inside of the spaceship and especially flying in between different worlds and we saw, you know, the amount of asteroids which would start to spawn onto the screen, then that would basically mean that all the polygons would actually be in view. And again, the headset had quite some difficulty to be able to render all those various different polygons you know, quite fast to make it as smooth as possible. So again, I was starting to get quite a lot of lagging and, you know, started there, which made the gameplay quite uncomfortable. Scanning. When we compare this to the 90 Hertz push to its maximum brink, I didn't have any issues whatsoever. The reprojection really worked very well. Everything is smooth, especially with the super sampling at 130% on SteamVR. There wasn't a lot of stutter around, especially for objects that are very near. Of course, for objects that are quite far away, it still is quite, you know, blurry and jagged. It's very hard sometimes to tell, you know, the branch of a tree, for example. So you really need a super high-end graphics card, I think, to render everything, you know, 100%. But with 90 Hertz, you can still get things, I would say, 75 to 80% clear, which means that your VR experience would be actually really damn good. Scanning. Now, funny enough, I found that when I actually switched off reprojection, I actually was able to get less stutter. So it seems that the machine, when reprojection is on, has, you know, causes more stress and has more troubles to try to render the frame rates uh, to be as smooth as possible. So I thought that was very, very interesting. Um, you know, if you want to learn more about reprojection, as I mentioned before, do go and check out the video we uploaded with Asuto Corsa Competizione. Uh, where, you know, I show you how to actually switch it on and also what its purpose is for. So even by turning reprojection off, of course, as I mentioned, still have some issues. So it didn't make the cut. So maybe, you know, we could bump down the uh, super sampling setting in Stevia and let's see, you know, how that will help. Hibernation activated. So I lowered it back to 100% from 130% and then I went back inside the game now. The game was much more comfortable. Yes, that's true. I didn't have as much stutter. However, I still got the odd stutter here and there when I'm going into potential locations that have a lot of textures that perhaps the GPU, you know, hasn't had time to cache in the past. Of course, we turned on shader caching inside of the NVIDIA. Of course, if you also want to see all the various different NVIDIA settings, then I do suggest you go and check out the previous videos to see what kind of settings I use there. But, you know, it was still not super clear in terms of graphics or super sampling there. You know, it just made things for me. My brain was just too used to 130% super sampling. 100% was just not clear enough for me and made things, you know, just not very comfortable. So, security breach. So guys, I hope that this video today gave you, you know, some more insights. And I really want to thank you for going to our previous videos and leaving all those comments that you put there. You know, it really helps the community. Please do give more feedback, you know, do your own experimentations because we don't have the same graphics card, of course, and leave your comments. So, you know, potentially the 6,700 other community members as where we are today, you know, can benefit from your feedback. That would be really awesome. So again, thanks for your feedback and your comments. But until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.